All right, welcome back to another edition of the Parkside Preview. This time I got head coach of Parkside men's basketball, Luke Regal. Coach, thank you so much for taking your time to join me. Always appreciate you having, on, having you on the show. So I'll start with this. 31 days on the road, five games in that span, including the New Year's break. How have we got to this point? What is your evaluation of everything that's gone on in these past 31 days? Well, obviously it's less than ideal, right? Um, Scheduling is very difficult at all levels. Uh, the D2 level is no different. And, and quite honestly, when, when we made the shift to the GLIAC, uh, that really messed with our schedule. You know, when we played in our old league, everybody from the GLIAC wanted to play us in non-conference games because it was the shortest trip. And we had, you know, little – we didn't have that much a problem of setting up a really nice schedule. Uh, now is not the case. So, uh, you know, there's just years where you have to return games. you got to go on the road for long stretches and uh, – and then it matters how the conference uh, season or schedule comes out. So, uh, you know, 31 days. We wish it would have been 30. You know, getting snowed out didn't help anything uh, down at PNW with the massive snowstorm that went through that area. So it, it's just been a grind. And for a young team, uh, you know, we, we've seen a, a lot of positives. It's frustrating because, you know, three of our last four losses literally come down to one play. Uh, if we get a stop on defense, if we uh, knock down a shot, if we you know make this play, uh, you know it could three of those four games could have gone the other way, and and uh, it's been rough, but you know we keep we keep competing, and that's what I like. I mean, uh, to go on the road, double overtime, lose a heartbreaker, that's tough, but uh, you know it's all experience, and hopefully it's making us better uh, for later in the year, and you know hopefully a, a postseason this year. Coach, I want to touch on the PNW double overtime game because uh, it was, as you said, you know, this whole road trip has been a roller coaster. I feel like that game was a, maybe even a definition of the entire road trip. You know, you lose your two starting guards in regulation after both them fouled out, but then you have two of your younger guards off the bench come in, step in and play crucial minutes. Modest Castillo and Jack Rose, not only did they play in those crucial minutes, but they also hit some big shots, kept you in the game. What does that tell you about the depth of the, the depth and fight of this team? Well, that's, that's something we've – we've thought we've had throughout the year and uh, whether it's injuries or illness and stuff like we just haven't developed the depth that we, you know, the rotation that we'd hope to play uh, until recently. So hopefully, you know, all these experience, you know, at, once you get past Josiah and our guard rotation, it's, Modest, Rokas, true freshman, Jack, you know, is a sophomore, but really in his first year here, um, and in a lot of ways, kind of a freshman. So, you know, you're playing, and, and Jake Dunham as well. So you're playing four young guards uh, along with Joe, and, and there, there's going to be the ups and downs. You know, I mean, like you said, all of those guys made really nice plays in the Purdue Northwest game, and they also made plays where you wish you had them back. And that's just the difference between, you know, juniors and seniors and, and young players. And it's something we knew we were going to have to live with this year. Uh, hopefully we keep getting better. They, they keep working extremely hard in practice. So um, quite honestly, I'd just like to get to a point where we have a clear-cut rotation and we can go with it for four or five or you know, six games in a row or even like a whole month in a row. So we'll continue to, to battle in that respect. But um, I like what I see. Every guy that steps on the floor shows flashes. Now the question is, can we get it consistent where, you know, instead of losing by two or losing by four, you're winning by five or six or seven. So uh, we'll just keep going from there. Coach, one thing that's been a staple and something you and the rest of the coaching staff expected is the production of Colin O'Rourke. He's uh, been scoring at a high level, been defending at a high level. In fact, was just represented as GLIAC Defensive Player of the Week after having three steals and three blocks, including a game-saving block in regulation against PNW. What has impressed you so much about Colin this season? Well, I, the, the consistency is important. Um, I talked to him, you know, we don't usually win individual awards after a game you lost, but I, I thought Colin deserved it. Uh, it's probably, it was the best defensive game he's played in his career. Uh, he, he just he defended inside well, clearly had the block shots, the steals. So th that makes a big difference on our defense. And if you look at that game on Sunday, um, you know, we only gave up 65 points in regulation. You know, the, the extra 20 came in the overtime. So we're just, you know, with Colin in the middle, uh, you know, we need him. You got Nick out on the wing. Uh, we got to keep Josiah on the floor for longer stretches. You know, those guys are the core of our defense. And then we try to add these younger players to, to keep getting better. And, um, 
you know, we need that. Like, we, we need those three guys that are our captains to, to play well on a consistent basis. And, you know, you're not, they're not, you're not going to play well every game, but we need them to, to be positive factors uh, night in and night out uh, so that the rest of the guys get a little pressure taken off them and they can just be uh, contributors on the, you know, on the back end of it instead of having to put a lot of weight on their shoulders. Coach, this week, two big games, of course, at home. you got Michigan Tech on Thursday, Northern Michigan on Saturday. What are some of your expectations with these two big programs coming into town? Well, first of all, obviously our focus is on Tech. Um, you know, I, I know their record isn't what they would like it to be, but they're a very, very talented group. They came in and, and knocked us out of the conference tournament last year. Uh, so we know the talent that they have, and, you know, they're kind of in the same boat. They've lost some heartbreaking games, uh, but we're going to have to play well uh, against a young, talented team in Tech. We have a lot of respect for their program. So that, that's 100% our focus right now. Uh, when we get to Northern, we'll, we'll worry about them, you know, on Friday. But clearly, they're, you know, they're leading the league, and they, they actually have a veteran group. You know, they, they've won a lot of close games with their juniors and uh, making a lot of big plays down the stretch. So it's going to be a tough weekend. It's just, it's quite honestly, it's just nice to be home and have a semi-normal week. You know, we would have liked to have our normal week of practice uh, if we wouldn't have had to play on Sunday. But um, we, we still are at home this week. You know, we're home for seven of our next 11s, so people can come out and actually see us play consistently. And uh, it's a fun group to watch. I mean, like you said, we've played so many tough, close games lately, but uh, we've also squeezed in some very nice wins in that stretch. And um, we're still right in the mix. You know, as frustrating as, as that loss was on Sunday, uh, it hasn't changed anything. We, we control what we, you know, our own destiny, and we just got to play well at home here this weekend. Coach, best of luck this weekend. All right, thanks, Ethan.